This episode is brought to you by 7th Generation. In New York, climate pollution is not only dangerous, it's expensive. In fact, it's costing the state $27.5 billion annually. But what if, instead of neglecting communities, we invested in them? With better infrastructure, a more stable energy grid, a future-facing, well-trained labor force, and support for low- to moderate-income households. Tell Albany, invest $15 billion in New York's future. Now's the time. To find out more, visit 7thGeneration.com slash climate. This episode is brought to you by Onnit. You know when you're so into what you're doing that you can't think about anything else? Feel that kind of focus every day with Alpha Brain. Its clinically studied nootropic ingredients support memory, mental speed, and flow state, that in the zone feeling. Alpha Brain is available as capsules, powder, or a ready to drink shot. And for extreme situations, there's Alpha Brain Black Label. Use code SPOTIFY to save cash. Learn more at onnit.com. Hello, listeners. I'm your host, Amara, and this is Black Girl Gone, a true crime podcast. On this episode of Black Girl Gone, we tell the story of Natanelli Perez, who was 19 years old when she disappeared from Miami, Florida on June 1st, 2012. Natanelli had gone to Miami from her home in Central Florida to pursue her dreams. But not long after her arrival in Miami, she became the victim of a sex trafficking ring that serviced rich men at five-star hotels. Natanelli's life had gone out of control and she was afraid something bad was going to happen to her. Ten years later, Natalie is still missing, and her family wants to know where she is and what happened to her. This is Natalie's story. If you follow me on social media, then you may have seen my post about Help You Find Me. For those who don't follow us, Help You Find Me is a database where you can create an If I Go Missing file where you can store personal information that can only be accessed by someone that you trust. Now, when this company approached me about a partnership, I was really 100% in from the beginning because the service that they're providing can be a game changer when someone goes missing. Over the past 53 episodes of Black Girl Gone, I wonder how many times something like Help You Find Me could have helped in the early hours of an investigation. I mean, like life insurance and wills, it can be hard to make plans for when something happens to someone that you love. And no one ever wants to be in the position where they're looking for someone that they care about. But when that does happen, you want to be able to have as much information about their last movements and their last communications as possible. In most of the cases that I cover, it's way more than 72 hours before the police will even get involved. And so being able to access personal information quickly can make a huge difference in the investigation. With this platform, I'm very particular about the kinds of partnerships that I even want to get involved with. But Help You Find Out Me is something that I really, really believe is amazing. It's an innovative service that can help families and investigators when someone goes missing. I think this tool is really especially important for Black women and women of color because statistically, we are more likely to go missing and cases involving us are not taken seriously. And often, they're left unsolved. Giving your family and friends access to a If I Go Missing file not only allows them to be able to investigate themselves, but it can help them bring critical information and evidence directly to investigators without having to wait for a warrant. But it's not just for women. It's really for everybody. I mean, you and your spouse can use it, your teens can use it, your college-age children can use it as well. I mean, Help You Find Dot Me is something that I think everyone should use. I'll put the link in the episode notes so you can click on that and you can learn more about creating your own file and more about what Help You Find Dot Me is doing and the services that they provide. Now, this week's episode about Natalie Perez, like a lot of missing person cases I cover, did not get much media attention. If you Google her name, you'll get very few results about what happened to her. The circumstances of her disappearance and the things that Natalie had fallen victim to, I'm sure probably made her disposable to the media. People don't believe that sex trafficking is real, 
And so they just assume that a 19-year-old caught up in that lifestyle is there by choice, when many times they're there by force. And Natalie, according to her family, was afraid. She had become the victim of a sex trafficking ring that, according to Natalie, involved powerful people who she was afraid of. Ten years after Natalie was last seen, her family is still trying to find out what happened to her. Natalie Perez was born on October 19, 1992. Natalie's family called her Natu for short. Natalie grew up in Sebring, Florida, a small city located in central Florida. As a child, her Aunt Maria, who helped raise her, said that she was a humble, sweet, lovable child. As Nati grew, her family could not have been more proud of the woman that she was becoming. Nati loved her family and her faith. Her family said that church and her Bible were very important to her. Nati was also a very talented singer, and both she and her family had big hopes for her. After Nati graduated from high school, she made the decision to move to Miami. Her sister Marilee said in an interview done by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children that where they are from, the dream was to either move to Miami or New York. And Nati had decided to move to Miami, which meant that she would be close to home if she ever needed anything. Nati's family was excited for her to move to Miami. They knew that she was talented, and so they supported her in her desire to pursue her dreams. According to some reporting, Nati had a friend who told her about a job opportunity, and it seemed perfect because Nati wouldn't have to look for a job once she got to Miami. In early 2012, Nati moved to Miami. At 19, she was an adult, but she had always been someone who would keep in close contact with her family. She would always call them to check in, but not long after Nati moved to Miami, her behavior started to change. Like I said, according to Nadi's family, she had always been a responsible and reliable person, but that had suddenly changed. Nadi was no longer returning calls or texts regularly. Her family would try to get in contact with her, but there would be days of no responses. At the time, Nadi was becoming harder and harder to reach on the phone. She also stopped posting on her social media accounts, which was completely out of character for Nadi, who was very active on social media before moving to Miami. Some people might have simply thought Nadi was just enjoying her new life in Miami. But her family knew that something was off, not only about her behavior, but her conversations also. When they were finally able to get her on the phone, according to her Aunt Maria, whenever they did, Nadi's phone conversations would be very short. When they would ask Nati questions about where she was or what she was doing, her answers would be elusive and limited. It seemed like she was afraid to say too much, and at times, it seemed like someone was telling Nati what to say. Nati's family was very concerned about what happened to Nati. They couldn't really do much, though. Nati was an adult who had moved to Miami, and even though they knew in their gut that something was wrong, all they could do was wait for Nati to contact them and be there when she needed them. And so that's what her family did. They waited. Now, at the time, Nati had cousins that were also living in Miami. And her cousins had seen Nati hanging around Miami with what they described as the wrong crowd. And they were afraid of the people that Nati was hanging with. Now, her cousins reported what they were seeing back to Maria, who contacted the police. She told them what Nati's cousins were seeing, as well as the strange way that Nati had been acting on the phone. But investigators said that Nati was an adult, and so there was nothing that they could do about it. After her cousins saw Nati in Miami, her family was all but convinced that something was going on with her. Nati had only been living in Miami for a short period of time, and her behavior had changed drastically. She was not the same Nati who had left to pursue her dreams just a few months before. Now, Miami has worked really hard to change its image over the years. I mean, what used to be the drug and cocaine capital of the world has been trying for years to shed that reputation and reemerge as the premier vacation spot for both regular people and celebrities. Now, I've been to Miami several times myself, and I've always had a great time and I've never had any issues, but Miami is still a city. And outside of South Beach, there's a city like most cities that is plagued by drugs and by crime. For a young woman like Nati, who was probably naive in many ways, 
living in a big city like Miami left her vulnerable to being taken advantage of by people that were older and more experienced than her. Anna, Nati's mom, said that Nati was a good girl. She graduated from school and then went to Miami for a job opportunity that would help her with her career. She was not a rebellious wild child who they would expect to have fallen in with the wrong crowd. And that's why what happened to Nadi is such an important story to tell. Because it can happen to anyone. For weeks, Nadi's family waited for her to reach out to them. By this time, it was clear that Nadi was involved in something and she did not want to tell them about it. And since the police could not do anything, neither could they. And then finally, Nadi texted her aunt. And she needed help. When Maria got the text from Nadi asking for help, Maria sent her sons to go and find Nadi and bring her home. When Maria's sons, Nadi's cousins, found her, she was in very bad shape and clearly had been beaten up by someone. Nadi's nails had been ripped back, her hair had been torn from her head, and she had bruises all over her body. Her cousins said that when they found her, she was shaking and she was terrified. Nadi didn't tell her cousins what had happened to her or who did it, but whoever had hurt Nadi had scared her to death. Finding Nadi in that condition must have been her family's worst nightmare. I mean, they had known all along that something wasn't right, and not to find Nadi like this had to have been heartbreaking and terrifying. After Nadi's cousins found her, they brought her back home to Sebring. And although her family knew that Nadi had been through something terrible, They were grateful to have her back home, and they prayed that their nightmare was finally over. At first, Nadi would not say anything about what she had gone through or what had happened to her. She was clearly traumatized. In just a few months, the Nadi that left them to follow her dreams, hopeful and excited, was now a beaten shell of her former self. Nadi had gone through unspeakable things, and as she began to open up to her Aunt Maria, it would become more clear to Nadi's family that Nadi had not fallen in with the wrong crowd. She had become the victim of a sex trafficking ring, and Nadi was terrified. When Nadi came home, her family hoped that it was the end of months of sleepless nights and worry about Nadi and her safety. Little did they know that shortly after Nadi came home, she would be gone again. Gaps in the diet shouldn't be ignored. Over 97% of women aged 19 to 50 are not getting enough vitamin D from their diet, and 95% are not getting their recommended daily intake of key omega-3s. Rituals Essential for Women 18 Plus Multivitamin was formulated by exhaustive research to help fill nutrient gaps in the diets of women ages 18 plus. It is formulated with nutrients to help support brain health, bone health, blood health, and provide antioxidant support. But Ritual didn't stop there. They invested in a gold standard university-led clinical trial to prove the impact of Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. The results? Essential for Women 18 Plus was shown to increase vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in just 12 weeks. So I've been taking my Essential for Women Plus multivitamin for a few weeks now. And as someone who's never been a vitamin person, I can tell you hands down that I love Ritual. It's definitely made a difference in my daily routine. Right now, Ritual is offering my listeners 10% off your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash girlgone and turn healthy habits into a ritual. That's 10% off at ritual.com slash girlgone. Listen to the new Audible original, Finding Tamika. From Kevin Hart and Charlemagne the God's SBH production comes a neo-noir true crime drama. Uncover the life, disappearance, and legacy of Tamika Houston, a 24-year-old Black woman from Spartanburg, South Carolina, who went missing in 2004. Find out how Tamika's case became a rallying cry for other missing Black girls and women in America. Learn how it led to a growing demand to expose a system that ignores missing women and girls of color. Here, actress, producer, and activist Erica Alexander summon a new generation to help raise the dead, expose a hidden past, and give a dark warning for our future. A Black girl does not have to go missing for us to not see her. Visit audible.com slash Tamika and listen now. Hashtag finding Tamika.
In early 2012, 19-year-old Natalie Natty Perez moved to Miami, Florida to pursue her dreams. Natty was a talented singer, and after high school, she moved to Miami with the promise of an opportunity for work. But shortly after arriving in Miami, Natty's behavior changed. And within months of her arrival, Natty's family was concerned that she had gotten involved with people who were forcing her to do things against her will. When Natty's cousins found her beaten and scared after texting her aunt for help, her family knew that what they feared most was true. They just had no idea the extent until Natty began to talk about what she had been through. After Natty returned home to Sebring, her aunt Maria tried to get Natty to open up and tell her what happened to her while she was in Miami. And after some coaxing, Natty began to tell Maria a terrifying story. Natty told Maria that she had been forced to do things she did not want to do. She told Maria that she had been put on the website Backpage, where men were able to purchase her for sex. According to Natty, a lot of the men that were purchased to take for her for sex were wealthy, well-connected men. Judges, politicians, cops. Men in powerful positions were bringing her to five-star hotels in Miami so that they could have sex with her. Nadi told her aunt that they would dress her up to make her look like a quote-unquote rich girl. But it wasn't just Nadi. She described other girls being involved in the sex trafficking ring also. She said they came from small towns like Sebring, but most of them were from other countries, and they had all been tricked. All of the girls were forced to prostitute. They were videotaped, drugged, beaten. Nadi said that the pimps would often starve the girls too. Now, according to a Reddit post about Nadi, She also told her aunt that she had gone for a bogus singing audition and was lured in that way. She said that she had been kept at the Fountain Blue Hotel and that she had been forced to call her family and tell them that she was fine. Nadi described a terrifying situation and she was scared that the men who trafficked her were going to kill her. Her family tried to get Nadi to go to the police, but she was too scared. Nadi said that the men that she had been sold to for sex were rich and they were powerful, and she was afraid to get them involved. Maria said that she told her that there were too many people involved and that she just didn't want to put anybody in danger. She also did not want to risk getting the police involved and making the sex traffickers angry. Once Nadi got home, she ended up staying with her mom, Anna, but... Nadi had been through a horrifying experience, and she had changed a lot. During the time that she spent at Anna's, her mom recalled Nadi being on the phone every single night, all night long. Now, Anna had no idea who Nadi was talking to. But not long after Nadi came back to Sebring, she packed her things and made the decision to go back to Miami. Something or someone was pulling Nadi back, and her family had no idea who or what. They begged Nadi not to go back to Miami. But during her last conversation with Nadi, Maria asked her, you know, don't you know what they're going to do to you? And Nadi told her aunt, quote, they can touch my body, but they can't touch my soul. Maria tried to get Nadi to stay, but she couldn't. And before she knew it, Nadi would be back in Miami. And no one in her family would ever see or speak to Nadi again. On June 1st, 2012, Nadi's sister, Mary Lee, received a phone call from a person that is described in many reports as Nadi's boyfriend. However, there's no information about this boyfriend or when he came into the picture or how she met him. But according to reports, Mary Lee received a phone call from him telling her that Nadi was missing. Mary Lee asked him what he meant by missing, and he told her that he and Nadi had gotten into an argument the night before and that he fell asleep. And that when he woke up, Nadi was gone. Immediately, Nadi's family started calling her phone to see if she would pick up. But her phone was going straight to voicemail. With everything that had happened to Nadi over the previous few months, her family was afraid that the traffickers had come back for her. Nadi had been afraid of someone. And now she was gone and her phone was going straight to voicemail. Nadi's family reported her missing to police and then headed to Miami to search for Nadi themselves. Her family passed out flyers and they went to local clubs, hoping that they would find Nadi somewhere in Miami. But they found nothing. The friend who had brought Nadi to Miami the first time 
wasn't being helpful either. Nadi's family had tried several times to speak to her, but she had been avoiding them and would not give them any information about Nadi. Nadi's family spoke to detectives who were working on the case while they were in Miami, but the police seemed to think that Nadi was a prostitute and not a victim of sex trafficking. Despite her being a 19-year-old with no history of being involved as a prostitute, they didn't seem to take her family's reports of a sex trafficking ring seriously. Instead, her family was told that the best thing to do was wait till Nadi was arrested for prostitution. But Nadi was not a prostitute. She was a victim of sex trafficking, and her family wasn't going to wait until she got arrested. They continued their search even without the police's help. In August 2012, detectives received a tip that Nadi had been seen at a mall in Miami. Now, it's not clear whether or not the sighting was confirmed or not, but by October 2012, when a local news station finally picked up the story, Nadi was still missing and her family had no answers. Nadi's family tried to use social media and looked on, looking into her social media accounts to piece together clues of where she could have been or who was involved in the sex trafficking ring, but they were unable to find any information that would lead them to where Nati was. Her family believes that during that short time that Nati came home, that she was talking to the sex trafficker on the phone every night and that they had been trying to keep tabs on her and had convinced her to come back to Miami. They believe it's possible that she could have even been threatened and that's why she decided to go back and it wasn't really much of a choice for her. In the months following Nadi's disappearance, her family desperately continued to search for her. Her story did not garner the attention of local media, let alone national media, and her family tried their best to keep her story out there. They began working with the Anti-Predator Network and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children to help bring awareness about Nadi's story. In 2016, Four years after Nadi was last seen, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children put together a video of Nadi's loved ones pleading for information. Her Aunt Maria spoke directly to Nadi and made this heartbreaking plea. Nadi, if you're watching this video, I want to say that I miss you with all my heart. That you're the love of my life. And now we need you to come home. Please come home, baby. And since Nadi, please come home. We need you. We miss you so much. Four years after Nadi vanished, her family was still in so much pain, and they were not getting any information about Nadi. Because there is no information about Nadi's investigation, it's hard to figure out what investigators know or didn't know about what happened to Nadi. It doesn't seem like much effort was being placed into this case. And it's my assumption, and I do say assumption because I don't know, but it seems like they probably just thought that Nadi was prostituting and just happened to have a family that cared. But Nadi wasn't a prostitute. Nadi was a victim. And her family feared that whoever had trafficked her the first time made sure that she wouldn't leave again and that they had cut off all communication to her family. Nadi could have been anywhere at that point. As the years continued to move by, Nadi's family did not give up hope, but it seems like the investigation, if there was one, was going nowhere. In 2020, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children again featured Nadi's story. Her family was hoping a new video would help to renew interest in Nadi's case and perhaps bring some new information in. During that interview, Anna, Nadi's mom, said this. My kid was a good kid. She went to school. She graduated. You know, she went to Miami thinking she was going to do work as, as you know, just working. And they pimped her out and they did whatever they wanted to do with her because she was vulnerable. She's not the first and she probably won't be the last. And if people keep quiet, this will keep on. At the time the video was made, it had been eight agonizing years since Nadi had been last seen. Her Aunt Maria said that no matter where she goes, she looks for Nadi. I look in the streets to see if I see her. I went to Colorado and I look for her. I went to Washington and I look for her. I go to Puerto Rico and I look for her. I go to the Bahamas and I look for her. 
Anywhere I go, I'm always turning around to see if I see her at any moment, at any time. It's been almost 10 years since Natalie was last seen. Information regarding her case, if any exists, is not publicly available. There is no information about witness interviews, phone records pulled, evidence collected, nothing. I think it's safe to assume that Nadi's case is cold. And I wish I could tell you more about an actual investigation, but the information is just not there. Natalie Perez was only 19 years old when she left her home in the small town of Sebring to go to Miami to follow her dreams. And shortly after arriving, someone took advantage of Natalie, and she ended up the victim of a violent sex trafficking ring. Nadi had been assaulted, drugged, and starved, and she was terrified. Her Aunt Maria believes that Nadi went back to Miami to protect her family from whoever was after her. And she was telling me, you know, if they find me, you know, they're going to do something. And I know for a fact in my heart that she didn't stay in Highlands County because she protected us. If I can go back in time, I would have never let her go. I would have I just held her and not let her get through that door. I've never left. If you still don't believe that sex trafficking is real, if you still don't believe that it can happen to anybody, then you're still not paying attention. Time and time again, we have heard stories about sex trafficking rings from Illinois to Vegas, from Ohio, and now Florida. We need to have more conversations about sex trafficking and its effects on our community. How many of the women that have been reported missing are victims of sex trafficking? I'm sure the numbers are higher than we will ever know. Natalie would be 29 years old now. The years have brought no comfort to her family, and they have had to move on with their lives without Nadi. She has missed so much of their lives, and they have had to deal with the pain of not knowing where Nadi is or what happened to her. From what we do know about the months and weeks before Nadi was last seen, is that multiple people were involved in what was going on with her. And that means that someone, somewhere, knows what happened to Nadi. Nadi never got to live out her dreams. Someone stole that from her when they tricked her and forced her into prostitution. The men, and maybe even women that took advantage of Nadi, deserve to pay for the life that they destroyed. Nadi's family just wants answers, and they want someone to care that Nadi is still missing, and that they are still looking for her. Nati could still be out there. She could still be deep in the world of sex trafficking and just unable to get home. Natalie Lee would be 29 years old now. She's five foot one, and when she disappeared, she weighed 130 pounds. If you have any information about Natalie Lee Perez, her whereabouts, or the circumstances of her disappearance, please contact the Miami-Dade Police Department.